This video is about what I think some of you wannabe cruisers and some current cruisers need to know about communications. Cue the intro. In order to have days like this, you're going to have days like this. This is Tips on Tuesday. We're going to talk about what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. Stay tuned so you don't feel like doing this. If you like these videos, please subscribe and give us a like. And if you have anything to add to the conversation or any questions, please leave them below. There are marks right below where you can move around this video for the things that you find important and you want to know. But in short, it starts off with land-based communications and then we'll move to satellite-based communications. If you have anything to add to this conversation, please leave it in the comments below. Or any questions, leave them also in the comments below. This video is not sponsored in any form or any way. So let's get started and talk about the SSB, single sideband radio. We're gonna put up our SSB antenna. This is our rope antenna, cheapest way to make an antenna for an SSB. So let's go put it up. SSB antenna. Here is our SSB. It's an ICOM 706 MK2G. It's a pretty nice radio. They sell used for I think about a thousand US dollars right now. But you can set up your frequency. You can set up uh, what type of you know transmit mode, FM, I believe you've got upper sideband and lower sideband. But um, anyways, it's a really good unit. I think uh, it's probably one of the best right now. There's one resistor that you can take out so you can transmit over all the bands. The resistor is removed in this one so I can transmit over any band. But anyways, that's the SSB. SSB and ham radios are used to communicate over short and long distances. Ham radio operators routinely communicate halfway around the globe with this exact radio. They can do this because unlike VHF frequencies, HF frequencies bounce off the ionosphere and return to Earth. It can get complicated because different frequencies bounce off the ionosphere at different angles. So you need to use different frequencies for different distances. Also, time of day affects the angle as well. Now I don't have a ham radio license, but our SSB receives and transmits over all ham bands and frequencies. In case of an emergency, legal or not, I'll transmit over any and all frequencies for the safety of Aquarius and the crew aboard. On my ICOM 706 MK2G, I remove the one resistor that prevents transmission over all the frequencies. Check out the web. If you have an ICOM 706 MK2G, there are several videos that show the proper resistor to remove. It's called the Mars Mod. I put a link below if you want to check it out. There are also frequencies designated for the Yachties so we can legally communicate over long distances with friends at sea. 
Many boats sailing together across the Pacific, Atlantic, or Indian will set up a time and frequency to talk each morning on the SSB during the crossings. There is also a service to receive weather grib files and emails via SSB if you have the proper modem. But I could never really get this to work, and recently I removed the Proctor modem while in Thailand. My Iridium Go works pretty well to download weather and send short messages, and I would find it very difficult to go back to the SSB days. Cost of the SSB email service is about $275 per year. I paid this in 2017, but I really couldn't get the equipment to work right. Yeah, probably operator error. But again, satellite is the way most sailors communicate while making crossings these days. For those of you hardcore sailors that still rely on the SSB for email and gribs, God bless you. There is also safety with redundancy. And if you can talk to somebody halfway around the world, that's a pretty nice piece of kit. I also like listening to radio stations all over the world during passage. And you might even receive the BBC News if you find the right frequency and time of broadcast for your location. So I do like the SSB, but it's not an essential piece of equipment for a crossing. Now, I would consider it more of a backup for long distance communications. Also, the SSB can be a backup high power VHF. Print out the VHF frequencies and have them on hand, like this one. Tune your SSB to the correct frequency and it's just like a VHF. Make sure you turn down the transmit power if you're communicating under 5 miles, because if you transmit at 30 watts it will probably saturate their receiver and all they will hear is static. But 10 nautical miles to 15 nautical miles and they will probably hear you Five by five. Look at that beautiful radio. Oh my God. The VHF, obviously a must have on a boat, though the maximum distance you can communicate over VHF is about 15 miles. Some say 20, but I say 15. VHF is line of sight. So if your antenna can't see your friend's antenna given unlimited visibility, you probably won't be able to communicate via VHF. The actual mathematical expression for distance to communicate in nautical miles is 2.25 times the square root of H1 plus the square root of H2. H1 and H2 are the heights of the antennas. Let's use two super marmus with mast heights of 20 meters. This would give a theoretical distance of about 20 nautical miles. But I think 15 nautical miles would probably be more realistic with average radios. It's always a great idea to have a few waterproof handheld VHFs for backups and safety. We have two ICOM 93Ds. They are a great option but I heard ICOM might be coming out with the same radio with AIS. That would be pretty nice. When it gets rough, Z and I have the ICOM 93D strapped to our vests. So, if we get separated for any reason, we can still communicate. The main VHF installed on Aquarius is the ICOM M605. It's loaded with great features like AIS receiver, hailer, auto emergency button, and I just love it. It's also really nice to have a backup AIS receiver. No, Aquarius is not sponsored by ICOM. I just found their products to match my needs. So, this is our AIS. Let me show you. We have the XB8000 from Vesper. It's mounted right here. And we've got it connected through an active splitter, which is also connected to our VHF, and that's connected to our antenna at the top of the mast. 
And it's also connected to our NEMA 2000 bus so we can get all of our NEMA 2000 bus data over the XB8000 Wi-Fi. There you go. Is that cool or what? Yeah, and it also has an app. Let me show you that. So if you make sure that you're connected to the Vesper XB8000, and we are, we can go over to Watchmate. And you've got this cool little app. It's got an anchor alarm on it. And it's got all the AIS information on it. You can set it up so the AIS transmitter is on or off. Right now, we are in silent mode. So if I go over here, I can turn off silent mode and that would transmit, or I can turn on silent mode and it will not transmit. Oh, there is one more cool feature on this. This. So I've got all the information. My heading isn't hooked up to the NEMA 2000 bus, but it will be at some point soon. So then I'll have all this information. And this is nice information when you're sailing. You can just turn this on and then you get the wind angle, the apparent wind angle and the apparent wind. It's really nice. And you can walk around the boat with this. While sailing within some countries, AIS is mandatory. So if you don't have it on your boat and you want to circumnavigate, you'll probably need to get it. We really like our Vesper XB8000 with Wi-Fi connection. Our XB8000 is connected to our NEMA 2000 bus and transmits all NEMA 2000 and NEMA 0183 data over Wi-Fi. Pretty cool piece of kit. You get all your NEMA data and your AIS data on all your navigation applications. There are also services that pick up all the AIS signals around the world via satellite. So we can view marine traffic real time and you can even find your favorite ship, Aquarius. This is a good photo to have on your computer before you take off on a crossing. This way you'll know exactly where all the shipping lanes are and plan your crossing of them accordingly. This is a good time to transition to satellite communications, but a quick safety note. Personal MOBs are also available. And yes, it might be a good idea to strap one to your life jacket like we do. But if you have an ICOM 93D strapped to you, I think that is plenty of protection. Anytime we're making a passage, like when we left Panama and headed to Marquesas, or Thailand headed to the Maldives, we activate our Uridium Go. The Uridium Go costs about $1,200 for the full Uridium Go kit, including external antenna, and we pay for the unlimited plan, which is about $150 per month from Predict Wind. We buy the unlimited plan because one, we like unlimited text messages and unlimited very short emails. Two, I don't want to think about the price of the minutes when I'm downloading weather, sometimes three times a day. Hey, if you don't like the weather you got, download a new one and maybe you'll get what you want. We also get 150 voice minutes for free, but Rarely do we use all the voice minutes because the connection really isn't that good and there's so much delay in the conversations, sometimes it's very difficult to understand the person you're talking to. Very often you will be disconnected halfway through the call or the download. And this does not bother me as much when I'm not paying for each minute of connection time. Make sure you really understand the plan you sign up for before you pay for it. I do like Predict Win service, but the rules make it impossible just to pay for one month of service, then shut it down. So just make sure you understand the plan. One thing you should think about is the cable length between your Uridium Go and the external antenna. If this length is too long, you might as well not even have an external antenna. 
look at the loss of the cable at the Iridium Go frequency, which is 1.6 gigahertz. It's usually listed in loss per meter or foot. 10 meter cable length or about 1.7 dB loss for the cable included in the Iridium Go package. Short RF cables are always the best. That's why my Iridium Go is here and my antenna is here. Not much more than a six foot cable run and there is not much loss in a six foot cable. The inReach is much less, about $300, and the service is much less as well. I think it's about $59 for unlimited text messages and position. I think this would probably work for most boats. Not sure what kind of weather information you would receive with it though. If Aquarius hired a weather routing service, someone that would text when we should leave and text what angles we should be at at sea, I would probably choose the Garmin inReach. But I don't really want to rely on someone else's judgment. There is also the YB3i, similar to the Garmin inReach, but always connected to the boat. I think it's probably better just to have the personal service just in case you have to leave the boat. You'll want someone to find you at that point and you wouldn't really care much about the boat. My AS would still be transmitting and therefore I would be able to locate Aquarius. High speed internet. Well, unless you have a ton of dough, high speed internet at sea does not exist. There is high hopes for Elon Musk's Starlink, but there is a lot of hurdles that need to be overcome before Starlink is a reality for the average sailor crossing oceans. I would say maybe 2026 for a fairly affordable internet at sea. GPS. A one-way satellite link that gives your location on land and or water. GPS is a US based service and there are also Russian, France and I do believe China also has some sort of global position capability. Some old sailors would say you can't rely on GPS. I say if GPS goes out we got a lot bigger problems to worry about than me just getting back to land. Might just want to stay at sea for a while until things settle down. On Aquarius, we have our main GPS at the chart table. We have another GPS at, for the AIS. We have another GPS for the ICOM 605 VHF. We have another one at the Furuno chart plotter helm. And every cell phone and tablet on board has a GPS. That means we have about 13 GPSs on board. So unless the satellites go out, I think we're going to be able to get our GPS position. There is one more piece of satellite communication equipment on board, and that's the EPIRB. I guess you need one, but if you have an inReach or a Iridium Go, do you really need one? Leave a comment below. What do you think? If you like this video, give us a like down below and click here to subscribe. That really helps us. And if you want to watch more of us, click one of those.